When measuring the danger certain species present, there are so many different metrics that are used. Their level of technological advancement, their ethics in war, religious factors, biological advantages or disadvantages. I find something far more accurate in assessing a species threat level is a far too often overlooked factor. What are their young like? Our first example are the Kifrongo. Located on a fairly mundane methane world, roughly 12 light minutes from their parent star, these Afropods are known for their relative pacifism. Known throughout the galaxy for their AI architecture, few fleets in the known galaxy will be able to function without a Kifrongo AI managing ship systems and navigation. The Kifrongo haven't been directly involved in an armed conflict in over 10,000 standard revolutions. Most empires think of them as weak, frail computer technicians and hardly worth the time it would hypothetically take to run Roshet over their home system. Then you look at Kifrongo brood clutches. You see, Kifrongo females produce two to three hundred eggs per clutch, with dozens of clutches in her lifetime. Once laid and fertilized, the eggs are left in the climate control chamber with enough food to last the hatchlings for their first few days. And then, the carnage starts. Over the course of 7 to 10 planetary rotations, the brood turns into an all out battle royale for survival. Hashlings killing and cannibalizing one another until a single one remains. Every single Kefrongo is the survivor of an all out death match, leading to only the strongest members of their race to carry on their genetics. If you ever think of them as mere technicians, I strongly suggest you look up Kefrongo martial arts and then remember that every single practitioner you're watching is already a survivor of a 1 vs 300 bloodbath. Our next subject are the Kallax. Feared throughout the galaxy for their powered armor and battle machines, Kallax come from a high graph ammonia world, orbiting 43 light minutes from binary star pair. The homeworld is a dark, cold place. Now I'm willing to bet you've never seen a Kallax outside powered armor, or at least a powered environment suit. This is deliberate on their part because to see a Kallax outside its mechanized shell is to be entirely underwhelmed. For a lack of a better term, Kallax are adorable. Standing only about a meter tall, covered in fur with giant eyes on a head that basically grows straight from their shoulders without need of a neck, they are quite possibly the least intimidating sapien species, the young even less so. Kallax cubs are typically birthed in groups of two to five. The cubs are secluded, the male is taking the primary role of caregiving to these, well, I think I heard the word puffball used to describe them. The young are tended all day and night, and hovered over for entire revolutions after as they are exceedingly vulnerable and delicate. After maturation, Kallax adolescents aren't much better, they simply grew limbs and eyes rather than staying a fuzzy ball with a mouth. Catch them outside their powered armour, and even a gangly Forfrian a kick a Kallax a few dozen meters. Finally, we reach our third subject. Hailing from a hell world, eight light minutes from their parent star, there are few who hear about this species and don't reflexively cringe. I am speaking, of course, about humans. While relatively unremarkable in outward appearance, few could say these upright walking hybrids between mammal and death avatar are unremarkable in every other respect. I've seen humans lose limbs and whole organ groups and survive. Reports of humans charging into hazardous environments to save friends or crewmates, heedless of the damage the act would inflict on themselves. I've even heard of a group of humans lifting a crashed shuttle to save a survivor pinned beneath it. Their culture is steeped in war and bloodshed, the revolution being the climb from prey to being the apex predator of their entire planet. And then there's the curious state of their young. A human female will give birth anywhere between 1 and upwards of 20 times during her life, with each birth ranging from 1 to 4, unless they use fertility modification. For the first two revolutions, human young are pretty much drawling incoherent slugs, possessing a small degree of biological weaponry that they have little control over. They require constant feeding and maintenance, and will perish if left unattended. However, starting at roughly their third revolution, that is where things begin to get scary. Human young enter a phase of clinical psychopathy, lasting one to three revolutions, where they are completely uncaring as to the harm they can and do inflict on others. They fully develop a form of sonic weaponry, as the scream of a human toddler 
can reach levels capable of rupturing most species auditory organs. My own had to be replaced with cybernetics after visiting a human daycare facility where dozens of these tiny monsters are cared for each day. They have zero concept of their own strength, which is frighteningly substantial. They regularly play on what most would consider military grade obstacle courses. They can and will use pack tactics when in the presence of other human youth, but they are also perfectly capable of functioning with deadly efficiency alone. They have become small plague incubators, carrying diseases that will barely phase them, but can temporarily incapacitate even fully grown humans. Their stamina is such that they can, at times, outfight and outlast even fully matured humans, and wage psychological warfare that drives their parents to the brink of madness. Humans as young as 10 revolutions have also been recorded fighting feral animals to protect their broodmates and win. Feral animals on a hell world. Let that sink in. You want to know why the galaxy fears humans? It's not their technology, that's relatively average. It's not their battle ethics, while they are terrifying, many have survived human assaults and even won. It's not their fleets, their guns, their war machines. Most will point to any of those as to why humans are considered the most dangerous species in the galaxy, but I say otherwise. Humans within three revolutions are capable of deafening and physically competing with roughly 88% of any species in the known galaxy and winning. They only get stronger and more belligerent with age from there. If you ever want to test a warrior, I encourage you to send them to a human daycare for an hour. Tell me if they survive.